All right, let's talk about coils or inductors. Um, but I think it's better to call these coils uh, for this particular video. Uh, these are just coils of wire. And uh, these are known as air core. There's, there's, there's no core in them. There's no ferrite or, or no, no iron or anything like that. They're just an air, an air core. And uh, they're just kind of a freestanding, uh, a freestanding coil. And they can be different sizes, different diameters, different gauge wires. Uh, they can be different things. So here's a smaller one. Here's a bigger one. Well, how do you, uh, how do you know how to build these things? Is there some type of magic formula? Um, you know, how how will we how will we how will we do this? And in fact, there are formulas that people use. And I find if I find the formulas a little bit cumbersome. And so. Uh, I recommend that you go get a table. There's a bunch of tables available. So let's look at this one. Uh, this one is a air coil winding chart. Uh, this is put out by um, CWS Bite Mark, whoever they are. <laughs> I found this in some document. Um, Santa Ana, California. Okay. So it tells you how many microhenries you will have if you do these things. So Let's say you have a, um, a quarter inch diameter and it's five inches long. So you have five inches uh, from, from uh, end to end, which is much, much like this one. Okay, it's about, it's about half an inch. And this one is a quarter inch in diameter. So we can kind of go down this table here. And then you can say, well, how many windings do you need for a particular inductance? And so I've wound here, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10. So I have 10 windings. Okay. So we can come down the chart here to 9.9 .9, and we go across and it says we should have, uh, we should have 0.25 micro Henry's. Okay. So let's measure it. All right, so we're going to be measuring pretty small things. So I, I recommend that when you're measuring small things, you, you press the cal button on your, uh, on your machine. My cal button's a bit sticky and I have to, all right, I just have to fiddle with it. And I don't know why, <laughs> probably needs cleaning or something. Anyway, so it says do an open. So you don't, don't connect the two and you push the button and uh, it takes 30 seconds. It actually is a pretty long calibration. Okay, it says pass, hit the cal button, it says do a short. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna short these together. And let's wait another 30 seconds. All right, pass. And now we can do a measurement. So we will stick our little coil here on the machine and we will go to inductance mode and 0.2 microhenries. And this, like I said, that's a pretty small value and this, this meter doesn't go down really, really small. I think if we increase the frequency, we can get better resolution. Let's see, yeah, there we go. 0 0.17, 100 kilohertz, 0.15. Okay, so it's somewhere around 0.15. Um, and we can go to our chart here and our, our chart's a little bit off then. It says we were gonna have two and a quarter and we only have 1.5. So. Um, I don't know what gauge wire they were counting on for this particular thing. That makes a difference. Um, but we were sort of in the ballpark, right? And it is a small value, but it gives you an idea. It gives you a starting point. So I would suggest use this as a starting point and then measure some and then kind of hone into where you want to be. Now, uh, oh, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Let me show you what's going on here. I'm holding them in a different way. Uh, and they were going up to, yeah, 0.2. So maybe this needs to be shielded as well for these, for these small values, but it's about 0.2. Okay. So we'll call it 0.2 and 0.2, uh, was here. And so 0.2 was supposed to happen at nine windings and 0.25 at 10 windings. Okay. So like I said, we got, we got pretty darn close and, uh, uh, it's a good starting point. All right, so let's take a look at maybe another way to uh, 
to determine how to wind these things, okay? There are these weird things, um, which I have to say I haven't used. Um, it tells you um, for a particular gauge wire, so this is, this is about a 19, a 19 or 20 gauge wire. Um, so it's, let's say it's 20 gauge. So here's 20 gauge. Um, it tells you that if you wind it so they're all touching, you will end up with 30 turns per inch. So that's all this does. It just tells you that you're here about 30 turns per inch, okay? And we had a 10 total turns, okay? So you're supposed to use a ruler with this thing. Uh, there's my ruler. Okay, so here's our ruler. Let me use a, yeah, let, this, this pen's fine. So we had um, something like this. And it's going to tell us the length of the winding in inches. It says we're going to have about uh, 0.35 inches in length. And that's not working for us. <laughs> Our length is about a little less, about maybe about 0.4 inches, okay? And so we're more, we're more up here. So uh, maybe our, uh, so I think this is 19 gauge. So we should have started here and we have 10, 10 per winding. Yeah, so that's better. So that's, that's telling us how, how, how long the coil is gonna be. So those are just geometrical tricks and stuff, right? Then uh, you can find the length per diameter uh, so I'm not quite sure. And then here's the diameter. All right, so our diameter was about a quarter inch, okay? And so we're actually way up here. So we're kind of doing that. This just tells you what our length to diameter ratio is. So that's just geometry as well. And then uh, down here, uh, it says, how many uh, micro microfarads do you have? And uh, we had, um, two. So anyway, I think, you know, you can use this if you want. I find these very, very cumbersome. <laughs> uh, so we'll just kind of ignore that one. <laughs> um, now, like I said, there's formulas. You can get the formulas out of the ARRL handbook. That's just fine. In fact, let's take a look at those. All right, and my, um, this is the 2015 book. It'll be different uh, probably for the different books, but there's something here called practical inductors and they talk about air core inductors. They talk about microhenries is the diameter squared number of turns squared divided by 18 times the diameter plus 40 times the length. So there's a formula here and uh, you know, it tells you how to do it. It gives you some sample calculations and stuff. So if you wanna figure out how many turns you need for this particular thing, they needed 26.1 turns. Um, and then they have a graph down here, which might be helpful. It tells you the number of turns. It says number of inductances, uh, uh, inductance. So we had about a 0.2 and uh, we had about a, for a, a quarter inch diameter, we would have needed about five turns. Uh, we had 10 turns with a smaller wire. This is for 12 gauge wire. So anyway, you see that, you know, you would need a whole bunch of curves in order to, uh, to calculate things. But anyway, all of the, uh, all of the information's in the book, in the big book. And uh, it actually, it talks uh, about straight wire inductance, just a length of wire with no, no turns in it, no, no, no coils can give you inductance. And so there's a nice write up on how you calculate that. Um, so anyway. Recommend you read the book. So these are super cool. Um, you'd, you'd think this is an antique that I had, you know, since the 1970s or 1980s and stuff. But in fact, I just bought this one just last week, brand new. <laughs> so you can go to the ARRL website and you can buy these brand new. I think I paid $12 or something like that for it. Um, but yeah, cool cardboard slide roll. Yeah, they still make them. Really, really cool. So this side will tell you um, a resonance, right? So you can pick 
a particular frequency you want to resonate at. So let's say we want to resonate at uh, 7 megahertz. So you put in 7 megahertz, tells you that's uh, 43 meters. It's not 40 meters, it's 43 meters. Um, and then you can go here and for a particular capacitance, let's say 100 puff, you need about 5 microhenries. So 5 microhenries at 100 puff will resonate at 7 megahertz. So yeah, so super cool on this side. But this is the one we want on the back side. Single layer coil winding calculator. Okay, yeah, that's what we were doing, right? So you have coil diameter and coil length, and then you have turns per inch, uh, microhenries, and enameled wire. Okay, so we had 19 gauge wire. It told us that we would end up having about 26 turns per inch, so that's here. And then uh, you get a particular uh, inductance. So we were getting uh, about 0 0.2, 0 0.2 on this little one, okay? And so it's kind of off the chart for this one. So this one is not really useful for super small things, okay? But I made a bigger one. So this is more where this chart would work better, okay? So this is about a 5, five eighths diameter um, winding, about an inch long. And there are one, two, three, let's see here. We, can, we, we want to do uh, windings per inch. We don't care what the total thing is. We want windings per inch. So we have about uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We have about 24 turns per inch, okay, on this, uh, on this thing here. All right, so we have 24 turns per inch with 19 gauge wire, that's that's right. They, they line up about right. And um, we have about a 5 eighths diameter, about an inch long. Let's check that. Uh, no, about uh, point, about three quarters of an inch long. So three quarters of an inch. So we can put it here. You can see the coil diameter is 5 eighths, which is sort of there. And our coil length is uh, three quarters, which is there. So I'm going to put them about together there. They, they cross right about there. Okay. And then we can come down here and we can see that at our calculation, this is about four microhenries. Okay. Well, let's measure it. Henry's. Okay, so three micro Henry's. Three, oh, there we go, 3.3. So it doesn't matter if I kind of touch it or not. Anyway, it's a little over, a little over three micro Henry's. Okay, and this is measured at kilohertz. It'll vary a bit. Okay, so it's measuring three instead. So here's two and three. Let's see, we were here. Three, I said four, and we were actually over here. So we were measuring about, I'd say about here. And now if we go to three quarters of an inch, it comes over. So it's very, 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 very small difference here, here um, in order to use this chart. So this is a little bit crude. But the other one was crude too. Remember, the other one didn't give us a perfect answer as well. So I think both of these things are good starting points, right? They get you in the ballpark. Um, if you're aiming at three or four, um, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty close. Um, and you can't buy these brand new. It's kind of a fun thing to, to have. Um, and then try, try, try some things out, see how, you, see how you do. Maybe for your particular wire, um, and your particular diameters and stuff, you can figure out maybe what the fudge factor is between what this says and what your coils will actually do. But it's kind of a fun thing. This is great for large things though, right? This kind of, you know, this really big coils like an antenna tuners and stuff. This is kind of nice for those. It goes from half an inch diameter to five inch diameter. So that's pretty crazy. And then coil length, it goes from 
uh, quarter inch to 10 inches. So it's kind of, this is kind of made for big stuff. Um, so that might be why it was a bit off. But anyway, um, I was excited that they still made these things and uh, now I own one. <laughs>